I used to do some, uh, a little bit of gardening, grow peaches in the backyard, so I'm quite busy. My name is Oras Kozinczak. I live in Wheaton, Illinois. I went 15 years without having the valve replaced, but finally it started getting to the point that I felt weak and I couldn't do anything what I was doing before. I would get tired and short of breath. Oris Kozinchuk was diagnosed with mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation is a disease of the heart which involves the mitral valve and it occurs when the mitral valve becomes diseased and leaky. When it gets severe, patient's quality of life goes down the tubes. They feel terrible in that they feel very fatigued and short of breath. They have true heart failure symptoms. My name is uh, Mark Ricciardi. I am the Director of Interventional Cardiology here at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago. So when you have a severely leaking valve, uh, for most of the patients we see, we always, of course, think about whether we can treat that with medications. And there's an occasional patient that will improve with medications. And then you're left with surgery as the traditional option. For Mr. Kozinchuk, because of the combination of his age, some other conditions he had, it wasn't such a great option for him. It would have been pretty high risk. And for him, the best way was going to be to replace the valve without a conventional operation. My name is Patrick McCarthy. I'm a cardiac surgeon and I'm also executive director of the Bloom Cardiovascular Institute here at Northwestern. So the doctor recommended me to uh, talk with Dr. Giardi. He decided we're going to put a replacement valve. Orist ended up having a transcatheter mitral valve replacement. Some people call this TIMVER, but essentially what it is, it's a mitral valve that can be placed through a catheter. It does not require open heart surgery. So TIMVER, or transcatheter mitral valve replacement, is the most minimally invasive way we know of, or that we can even imagine, to replace a mitral valve without open heart surgery. It's an investigational device. We're using it as an early feasibility study. In other words, we're testing the valve because it's so new in people who have very bad mitral valve disease and yet have no real good surgical or medical options to make them better. They asked me, he says, how do you feel about the operation? I says, doctor, when I wake up, I'll let you know. We were all very happy to see how well he did afterwards. It was really quite remarkable. Everything is working fine, and the valve is working fine, and I couldn't thank enough Dr. Ricciardi for what he did. Otherwise, I was going down the drain. He's done incredibly well. I've seen him several times in follow-up, and he's a new man. My hope is that these newer devices will give options to patients who are in a jam and stuck with no good options for them. I tell my patients they can hear about trials. They certainly don't have to sign up for it. They can just listen to it and, and decide it's not for them. You know, look at the other options. There's a whole lot of things that can be done that five and 10 years ago weren't possible.